You jealous, Tiger? Kinda. <laughs> I don't know, are you jealous, buddy? Sons of Anarchy, Season 5, Episode 5, and after the doom and gloom of Opie passing, this episode turned it pretty fucking gay, dammit. As D-Generation X would say, or in this case, Chibs Telford, got two words for ya. Two decks. Right. This episode, this, I'm, I'm willing to bet this episode's gonna get demonetized. Half the stuff you talk about in this episode, I don't know how it would get monetized, so you know what, you may as well come out with the F-bombs in the first 30 seconds. Am yeah, right? it was uh, full of gay, full of dicks. Two dicks, multiple. Um, trans, sa transsexual, transvestites, weird looking people. Uh, just a mess of an episode, This really. is some good shit, apparently. I think Opie was the rank person that got his head caved in. Anyway, we've got three facts. Uh, no, numero uno, first appearance of Phoenix Van Damme. Fact number two, Walter Goggins is the sixth shield actor on SOA. And fact number three is Orca means a large tooth whale. Referring to the councilman, apparently, that Jax was referring to with Jacob Hale at the beginning of this episode. But begin the episode, Jax is talking about how he buried his best friend three days ago. And he gives a good quote, he says... But I know what hate does to a man, tears him apart, makes him into something he's not, turns him into something he promised himself he'd never become, end of quote. Normally when people say these things, like in wrestling or other shows, it's just like mumbo jumbo, but I think when Jack says it, you, if you feel like I, you he feel means it. it. Now what, is this true? Is it Jack saying it though, or is he just stealing fucking JT's lines? As he, <laughs> gimmick infringement. But is this right? Everyone, everyone on the planet hates something. I don't give a shit if you're a too goody Christian Bible basher. You hate something. And I think Jax is fucking right. It does tear him apart. Hate gives you, like, a reason. There's no love without hate. You can't just love without hating. I don't hate people. But I hate circumstances. Like, you, institutions. All that stuff. Aye, you hurt, like, certain aspects. I hate not being successful. Aye. But you don't hate a certain person. No, I don't hate individuals, but I hate being successful. Wait, so there's not one person on this planet you don't hate. No, not hate. Hate's a strong word. Like, there's people I don't like, and there's people I might have said I hate it in the past, but there's no one I genuinely hate. Fair like, enough. I think to hate somebody, they must have done something really fucking bad to you. Even, like, the scummiest people in the world. I, I think, I would go as far as saying if you don't know someone personally, you can't really hate them. True. Like, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't hate Hitler. I don't really know the guy. Well, we're back up a minute. Hitler. <laughs> as, Hitler. Hesh, as Hesh says. I'm like, <laughs> no, but I mean... I, uh, I get the point. No, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sure I'm sure he was a bad guy and all that stuff, like, but, uh, I mean, I can't really say I hate him. I didn't know him. Yeah, I... I didn't do, do anything bad to me. Well, he kind of fucked up Britain, didn't he? He attempted to. <laughs> no, but you get my point, you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, yes, okay. I, I think to hate someone, you need to sort of know them on a personal level. Like, see when people say, oh, I hate Justin Bieber, do they really? Just because the guy... You hate his music. I you hate what he created. You don't hate the guy. Probably an alright guy. Don't probably, know. He's probably dead on. Anyway. People say they hate the Paul brothers. I mean, why? Right, I want to talk about some fucking big men on big bikes, all right? That, sounds, big, that it, sounds very gay. Then an even bigger man with a huge cock. Anyway, let's talk about the, the start, because Jax, he says... Oh, this episode was missing with gold dust, to be honest. It was. He says he's spending every day cleaning up the, the one before, which is another good line. Um, he arrives, they sit down with Jacob Hale, Bobby and Chib. So obviously, Clay wanted Charming Heights to fail. Jax wants it to happen. I think it just goes to show you that both got different futures. Clay wants to keep the town... In the past. Yeah, white, crime-free. Jax is willing to... Open up for the sake of the club. Well, Clay was more like a case of, well, you know what, as long as Charmin's all right, fuck the club, as long as my pocket's rich. I'm not saying, like, Jax wants all this diversity and all this, like, LGBT stuff, although based off this episode, I'd probably say he might want that. Anyway, they're all for it, like. let's move on. But in order to... Um, but also that quote for Jax saying he's, he's spending every day cleaning up the mess of the previous ones, I don't know a bit similar to what Opie said when he referred to the fact that being in the club's just not that funny anymore. Yeah, it's about money and chasing money we don't need. I like that feel, but it's a shame he's dead, but uh, Jax, so essentially what they're going to do here. Oh, hold on here. Hope he spent most of his time needing money. And in jail. Don't need, but... You needed it. He was chasing a lot of it in well, season one. time, they didn't really need it. I mean, he dished out 20 grand, Delilah. Season one, Opie he couldn't dish out 20 dollars <laughs> for a lap dance, let alone fucking 20 k. Anyway, let's move on. Good job, Lila. It's a slut. You should probably give him one for free, eh? Well, 
A wee freebie, but uh, yeah, they're going to blackmail this council. Venus Van Dam would probably give you one for he free as well. Oh, actually, she wanted 2k, but anyway, this fat councilman will sort him out in a wee time. We're sitting round the table. Uh, Frankie Diamonds and Gogo, they're very focal here about the club being blamed for the home invasions. Jax and Tig, tag team of the year here, saying, no, there's not a chance. If it's black, it'll stop. Chips are then like, you, you, and you don't know shit about time. You don't know dick. <laughs> Well, let me rephrase that. You don't know two dicks. And then he points to our club. The peg. Three dicks. <laughs> Clay's kind of backing this up, though. It's like Clay was like top man for like 40 years. Chev, are you going to fucking bash him as well? I can't really turn around and say to Clay, you don't know shit. <laughs> True. True. I would kind of go against our logic that uh, Chev's. You don't have him. a dick to stand on, Clay. <laughs> Clay should be at this point anyway. So. Yeah, they, then take a photo about getting in bed with Nero. Uh, everyone leaves. Clay's like, it's wrong. He's sleeping with my wife. Jack's like, yeah, that stops. That's all right. <laughs> no, I, you know, I get Clay's point. And actually, Jack actually has a moral compass at this point, even though he's just died. He actually accepts that that's wrong. But it's like... Yeah, because Jax could have just been better here and tried to screw Clay over and realised that hurt Clay. And he was like, nah, you know what, Nero? See that relationship? You keep it going. I mean, Jax could have done that. But I think he's doing the right thing here. Or maybe but, he's not doing it for Clay's sake. Like he is, but he, he could be doing it more for his own sake, and he just thinks GM is bad news. The size of the grapefruit's on Clay to actually tell this to Jax and be like, "Yeah, that's wrong." After everything he's done, <laughs> murdered half the table, half the family members. You want to talk about what's wrong there? <laughs> you want it, Clay? We then meet with the IRA. Galen first appearance this season. Clay takes off the oxygen tank. He says the juice will be all right as long as he doesn't have to dance. He doesn't have to dance. Um, he, he handshakes Gail he's like ah good to see you up and about brother and he's like I wasn't there where there was an election it's like ah I had to get jacks up when I was doing even the way Clay he, he tries to save face the way he, he, he's like trying to portray it as if I I decided that, that Jack should uh, move up yeah I mean Clay hold on the last time I what I recall is you were laying in a fucking hospital bed with your lungs Ha- dying and, and Clay Jax came in and ripped the patch off you I mean that's kind of <laughs> that's pretty much what happened but I mean, like, Galen points out that their seniority is not sewn on by cheap Fred and it's like that's like an entire dig at the club like Clay was sewn on with Fred the same fucking Fred I get what he's saying it was completely and then he's like oh don't get so sensitive laddie what's Jax supposed to do just fuck accept that L that he's been given like a good little dog yeah obviously not- Jax is going to no, he takes it bad and he's like, throw some balls, you Irish prick. And you know what? Galen, true to his word, steps up to him. But I like the fact Jax calls him out here. Is Jax supposed to job it? No, let's be real about it. Is he supposed to just fucking accept it? Yeah, you know what? It's cheap Fred. So not on. 2p. 50. Nah, 50 he, he, called 50. It, he called it Jax's honour, so Jax has got to defend it. As good as Jax was, though, at calling this out... He got his absolute ass handed to him. Galen battered him. He did for an older man. Galen must be about double the age of Jax, but he probably landed about double the amount he's of punches. He's probably about what sixty here, I'd say. Yeah, he landed double. It. He landed about double the amount of punches. Like yeah, the cartel arrive. Um, Didn't they, quite have the uh, the comping box shots like, but no, nah, it's going to end in Guinness and Manhug says Clay. Then we agree the deal, and it, it, it's actually mental how easy they got this deal across. Considering like the last time Clay wasn't there, Galen walked out. Literally, Galen walks in here, shakes a hand to Galindo. He's like, "Right, guns." Then he opens the barn door. You haven't seen what they can do yet, brother. Got to test the hardware. Then he blows up the bikes, and Chibs is like, "You dirty Irish bastard!" But the the bleep was like getting bleeped out by the fucking sound of fifty cal machine gun. Really liked this, and then Jack's kind of like, "Ah, we'll we'll send you the." A memo about the fucking bikes. It was, it was like one of those kind of weird ones where like Chibs was being held back, but it's like if he wasn't, what was he going to do? Yeah. Was he really going to fucking start attacking him? Like, I'm not too sure. Batter, the big man. So, uh, yeah, as this is all going down, Chucky delivers, made the delivery. Chucky made the delivery. As Chibs point out, gives this fat guy a brownie. He eats it. He absolutely passes out. Um, and then this is where things get a little gay. Because Phoenix Van Dam arrives, and essentially they're paying Phoenix Van Dam here to jump up and down on this fat guy by the name of what Beacon, Beconi, whatever. To obviously blackmail him with a tranny. And while this is all going down, who enters? His stepson. This guy who was in prison break. He only, he's only in one scene here, but 
you know what? You can say this is gay. You can say it, obviously it is, right? It's very fucking very weird. Gay. But it is funny. You can't I mean, say it's not funny. I mean, it is funny, but if you refer to genders, would it be funny? Of course not. You know, this guy... What do you mean, of course not, you know? What? Oh, well, no, of course it wouldn't be. Fuck, it'd be the end of the world. This should have been cancelled. I would they even do something like this in 2024. Probably not. No, but that's what... I'm not saying, like, this is brilliant, because obviously it's still a bit woke, but the way they incorporated it, I thought was pretty well done. It wasn't like they completely... It's not like they completely sold Sam Crow down the river. Even though this guy pointed out that, hey, you guys are the sons. And then the sons completely say, it does, doesn't mean, man, we're all gay. And then Chib's like, two dicks. The best scene. You didn't even see it. This is your first time you've ever seen it. Thoughts on it? I just don't recall that happening. What, what Chib's saying two dicks? What, what do you mean that's the first time I've ever seen it? You what? said you'd never noticed it before? Chib's saying two dicks? Oh, I don't really recall it. I think it's the greatest thing, in the, the greatest line of the show. Well, if you didn't really, if you if you've seen it before, then why did you think it was so great this time? I don't know because I saw your reaction for the first time. I was like, "Oh, you've not seen that." I've always thought it was great. I quote this on a daily basis. Two dicks. <laughs> not really. It's a bit fucking gay. <laughs> a bit fucking gay. <laughs> no, but it's the fucking hand delivery into it. It's everything about it. It's well done. It's very. Well done, but then Phoenix Van Dam says to this kid, Have you ever had your dick sucked by a southern man with a huge cock? And everyone's just looking. Chibs and Happy have got a look of disgust. Tig's fucking marking out. Juice is like, Really? Really? Then they blackmail this kid. How do you want to get your Facebook page helped by these bad boys? And then he's like, No, I want to hang out with you guys. The Chibs like, Ah, yeah, you can clean the cum and the puke off the bathroom floor. And he starts laughing. Everyone's laughing. He just gets kicked out. And then, that's pretty much what they say. I, I thought this was actually really funny. I'm not going to bash it too much. That was, it was good. That was good crack. But it was too gay in your opinion? It was very gay. But, uh, I think if Phoenix Van Damme ended it here, it would have been fine. Like a one-off cameo appearance. Would, do you agree with that? Oh, 100%. It could have been a one and done. One and done. Tig then gets his ass bit in a hilarious fashion, of course. Season 1, episode 5, it was a dog this it's time. Always Tig into, it's always Tig getting fucked up. Yeah, remember you could argue, is this actually possible to bite through the jeans? But we've seen a million times in The Walking Dead how they can bite through big, thick coats and shit. So you know what, I'm going to buy this as possible. But you know, it was funny um, seeing this guy absolutely bite him. But then cut to the next scene, Tig's bare ass is just sitting on the table. Yeah, it was a massive chunk that he took out of Tig. Like, and this guy must have had some bite force. Those cookies never stood is a no chance. Is no one wondering, though, like why, like, why are the nomads not in these scenes, or Clay? It's very... W I get Clay, I guess Jax is completely distancing himself for this guy, but I just couldn't imagine how that, that scene with Van Damme would have went with Clay. I, I think Clay would have pulled out a gun, maybe just killed him. No, honestly, I think that's what might would have happened there because it just would have been absolutely quite incredible. But Tig gets his wee tetanus Quite incredible. Aye, quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Is he what? Well, would you think so? That might have been, aye. <laughs> might have been quite incredibly gay there, damn it. Um, Tara then tells Gemma that she didn't tell Jax that she beat Carla to a pulp. We didn't see Carla this episode. Nero kind of lets on to Jax that he's pretty much cut all ties with. We also had a scene with Nero and Gemma where... He says we're done. He gets her up against the wall and it looks like she's dumped. It's been a long time since I've been dumped. So Gemma, for the first time probably in her life, seen a man step up to her. Perfectly last season when he battled her to a pulp. Yeah, she didn't like it. Did not like it, damn it. Uh, we also have Clay. His episode's basically been took up by the fact that some of the East Dub crew got caught with stolen goods. And it's at this point I said, couldn't Clay and Gemma literally have claimed that they owned some of this stuff? Yeah? Yeah, I suppose so. Eli Roosevelt, though, he's looking at Clay like, what's this old white supremacist bastard got up his sleeve? Eli had a look on him that this guy's up to something. And you know what? He's right, because the nomads, damn it. The nomads attack Eli Roosevelt's house. They kill his wife. Um, was this a complete botched hit, or do you think this could have been handled differently, or what? Then, yeah, no, well, I mean, of course, it was botched to kill her. It's not the intention. It wasn't the intention. She dies, but she gets a massive scratch into Gogo. Again, I will always question Gogo's methods here because he proceeds to go to the table the next day wearing nothing to cover his neck. He literally wears a vest 
with a cut where his neck is for all to see. Like, what's he doing? It's not. It's not the the most fashionable sense. To yeah, it's aware. questionable actions. Like, I mean, like Clay Plopper stirs him out in the next episode. Crazy, but uh, Jack gets a delivery. What's he get a delivery of? It's a titty and a thumb. So we had all that gay shit earlier. Here's a titty and a thumb to try and balance the scales. Jackson, one titty, two thumbs. Looks at it as the episode ends. Damn it. So yeah, is Eli's wife going to die? We'll find out at the beginning of the next episode. But overall, Jax gets his deal with Hale through with a lot of gay shit. Galen and the cartel finally came to terms. Clay, he's feeling a wee bit free with the oxygen here. What, is he behind the nomad attacks? We'll have to wait and see. Funny episode. What are you getting out of 10? What do you mean we'll have to wait and see? We know he is. Spoilers. Hi, everyone listening to this review has already seen it. Uh, right, anyways, so. but he's behind the What are you getting at? Um, uh, 7 out of 10, it was... I mean, the, the scene the, the, uh, the scene with Phoenix Van Damme was funny. I can't deny it, but it was very gay. And outside of that, I thought the episode overall wasn't that great. Yeah, but so you take... I think the meeting was good. It was, it was, hell, it was, but... Yeah, I liked Galen. I liked the Galen meeting. But uh, it was just like an average episode, I would say, really. It was... But an average episode for Sons is probably around a 7. Yeah, so I'll give you a 7 too. Very good. Uh, well, very good. Very good comedy. I like the comedy. We love the comedy. Till next time, guys. Peace.